Hello, and welcome to FWC's recorded workshop on Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. This is the third public workshop FWC has held on this topic. This presentation provides an overview of the issues surrounding seabird entanglement and fishing gear at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park located in Tampa Bay. This presentation will also provide a summary of potential final rule options that staff think could minimize severe entanglements of brown pelicans and other seabirds at Skyway Pier. FWC staff are gathering feedback on options for regulations intended to reduce severe seabird entanglement at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. Skyway Pier is one of the most visited fishing piers in the state, attracting both residents and visitors from around the world. The site and surrounding area is also a popular place for seabirds including pelicans, to forage, perch, and rest. Entanglement of birds and fishing line has been occurring at Skyway Pier for many years, and seabird angler interactions at this site occur much more frequently than at other sites. Since 2016, FWC and partners have engaged in outreach and education efforts to reduce the likelihood of entanglement and improve rescue success. Despite those efforts, severe entanglements still occur in large numbers at Skyway Pier. For this reason, we are looking to implement fishing regulations to help address this issue. Brown pelicans are the primary species at the Skyway Pier regularly involved in negative angler seabird interactions. Pelicans have a unique foraging behavior in that they plunge dive headfirst from heights as great as 50 feet to capture and scoop up fish. They are also known to capitalize on human activity by following fishing boats, spending time at marinas, and scavenging from bait buckets. The brown pelican was removed from the Florida Endangered and Threatened Species List in 2017 with the passage of Florida's Imperiled Species Management Plan. Specific conservation objectives and actions are outlined in the Species Action Plan for the Brown Pelican. Actions designed to address threats to pelicans include protecting breeding and foraging habitat, preventing disturbance during nesting, and outreach to minimize entanglement. Brown pelicans are also protected under state and federal rules. These include State Rule 68A-4.001, General Prohibitions and Requirements, which prohibits the take, transport, sale, and possession of wildlife, and specifically prohibits intentional feeding of pelicans. Additionally, the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act makes it unlawful to pursue, hunt, take, capture, kill, or sell brown pelicans and other migratory birds, including their feathers, eggs, and nests. In Florida, pelicans breed in colonies consisting of hundreds of birds nesting on coastal islands and in mangroves. Peak nesting season here is typically April through August. The Tampa Bay area is home to multiple large nesting colonies, and both juvenile and adult pelicans are frequently seen foraging and resting at Skyway Pier. The yellow stars on this map show current and historical breeding sites surrounding the north and south Skyway Piers, which are seen by the red lines on the map. Additional colonies in Tampa Bay are located outside of the area shown here. The pelican population in Tampa Bay includes both year-round residents and winter migrants. In the winter months, migratory pelicans come to Tampa Bay from colder latitudes due to the abundance of habitat and food resources. The arrival of migratory adult pelicans plus recently fledged juveniles from nearby breeding colonies dramatically increase the overall number of pelicans in the area during the non-breeding season as they take advantage of ample habitat and foraging opportunities. In addition to the breeding sites shown here, roosting occurs at any available habitat. The quality and availability of pelican roosting and breeding habitat surrounding the Skyway Pier is one of the features that attracts so many pelicans to the area. Skyway Fishing Pier State Park was established in 1992 after the current Sunshine Skyway Bridge was constructed. Sections of the original bridge were converted into two separate fishing piers, one in Pinellas County on the north side of Tampa Bay and one in Manatee County on the south side. The park also includes multiple decommissioned spans of the original bridge adjacent to the fishing piers, 
which are not accessible to people. Each pier includes a bait and tackle shop. Skyway Pier is a popular site for anglers because of its accessibility and length, over two miles in all, as well as the unique fishing opportunities created by the spans of decommissioned bridge. The pier is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and is staffed by one state park ranger and multiple concessionaire employees. Visitors pay admission fees to use the piers. Because Skyway Pier is both a former transportation structure and a state park, management responsibilities are shared between the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the Florida Department of Transportation. Since 1995, DEP has contracted the operation of the state park to a concessionaire. The FWC's authorities at Skyway Pier are related to fish and wildlife. All three state agencies involved with management at the site coordinate on pier activities, including on how to address or minimize seabird entanglement. So what do we mean when we talk about interactions and entanglement? Entanglement is defined as any situation in which a bird is caught in fishing gear, whether it causes harm or not. We know that entanglement can range in severity. In its mildest form, this could include a brief bird encounter with fishing line where an angler can release it safely without handling the bird. More severe forms of entanglement require rescue intervention and potential handling of the bird. Severe entanglement can also be caused when birds tangled or hooked in gear break the line or if the line is cut. Broken or severed lines lead to a higher likelihood of the bird's death or for introduction of fishing gear to a bird habitat where it can cause secondary entanglement to other seabirds. Entanglements that require experienced response, specialized equipment, or additional rescue assistance are considered severe or chronic entanglements. Oftentimes, serious injuries from severe or chronic entanglement require veterinary care or may lead to the death of the bird. Fishing gear entanglement of seabirds has been occurring at Skyway Pier for many years. Since at least 2013, volunteers have engaged in either organized or Good Samaritan rescue efforts to unentangle and rescue pelicans and other seabirds at this site. Skyway Pier is popular for both anglers and seabirds, especially during winter months. When it's cooler, more people visit the site due to favorable weather and fishing conditions. The fishing opportunities for both people and pelicans, along with the unique features of Skyway Pier, create a high likelihood for seabird angler interactions during the cooler months of the year. Compared to other fishing piers, Skyway has multiple elements that contribute to higher frequencies of angler seabird interactions and entanglement. The pier height, around 16 foot tidal average, makes suspended fishing lines a risk to pelicans foraging around or under the pier. Juvenile pelicans that are not well adapted to foraging and flying may have difficulty detecting the fishing lines cast from this high pier. Abundant perches make Skyway Pier especially attractive to seabirds for resting, especially in the winter months. The adjacent decommissioned bridge spans create shadows along the water surface that result in unique fishing opportunities for both people and birds. These shadows also make it difficult for pelicans to see and maneuver around fishing line. A 2022 study found these attributes of Skyway Pier to be the most significant in explaining rates of pelican entanglement. Impacts to pelicans range from minor wounds to severe or chronic injuries or death. Cut or severed fishing line also has the potential to impact other birds when it is transferred to their habitat, which can lead to further losses. Although seabird entanglement can occur throughout Florida, the number of entanglements at Skyway Pier is significantly greater than at other sites. According to a study by Thomas and Forres in 2022, the average number of pelicans and anglers at Skyway Pier is greater than at both fishing piers located nearby in Fort DeSoto Park. The average number of entangled pelicans counted at South Skyway Pier is higher than at all other Tampa Bay piers combined. The study identified variables influencing entanglement rates and included whether piers were open or closed, availability of perches near the piers, 
and the time of year. Time of day is also considered a variable in the number of entangled pelicans observed. Many entanglements don't require extensive rescue expertise and birds may not be significantly impaired. However, reports provided by DEP, the peer concessionaire, and volunteer rescue groups indicate that severe entanglements account for nearly half of all rescues in recent years. Thomas and Forey's also reported that more than 7% of all brown pelicans seen near fishing piers in Tampa Bay were chronically entangled in fishing line, and the South Pier at Skyway had significantly more injured and dead pelicans than other piers sampled in the study. Design and construction of fishing gear can also be a significant factor in entanglement risk and severity. Evidence from severe entanglements indicates the lightweight line, fishing rigs with multiple but separate single hooks, and lures with multiple hooks are most likely to lead to harmful injuries of brown pelicans. Impacts of fishing gear entanglement on the local brown pelican population have not been formally studied though harm from entanglements, especially to breeding birds, could lead to a decline or to secondary impacts to pelicans and other imperiled species as mentioned. Since early 2021, FWC has undertaken extensive stakeholder engagement to identify solutions and build support for actions, including fishing regulations that could address angler seabird interactions as Skyway Pier. The Hooked Pelican Working Group has held three meetings since its establishment in 2021 with between 30 to 50 participants at each meeting. FWC held two virtual public workshops to gather input on potential fishing regulations to reduce entanglements, one in November 2022 and the other in January 2023. Each workshop was attended by over 100 people. A recorded version of the November virtual workshop has also received over 400 views on FWC's Saltwater Fishing YouTube page. A letter from FWC Chairman Rodney Barreto was sent to over 300,000 recipients, encouraging all stakeholders to productively engage on this issue as the Commission works to develop potential regulatory measures. FWC staff also held a focus group meeting and consensus building workshop with invited Skyway Pier stakeholders representing conservation organizations, anglers, state park staff, government officials, and rescue volunteers to discuss potential rule options, attempt to build consensus, and obtain feedback. More recently, staff has met with small groups of stakeholders to gather input ahead of forming a final rule proposal. Lastly, since November 2022, FWC has received over 500 comments through various methods, including email, phone calls, and the Saltwater Comments webpage. Stakeholder feedback informed the proposed rule package that staff presented at the February 2023 Commission meeting in Jacksonville, which is shown here on the slide. The proposal presented to commissioners included, for those fishing at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park, establishing an annual education requirement, prohibiting the use of hook and line gear with more than one hook attached, such as sabiki rigs, chicken rigs, and topwater plug lures, as well as the use of any multiple hook, such as treble hooks, from November through March each year, limit anglers fishing within the park to use of no more than two sets of hook and line gear, prohibit use of sabiki rigs year round within a portion of South Skyway Pier, and proposed a requirement for FWC staff to return to the Commission with an update and recommendations for potential future action two years after implementation. Staff also recommended monitoring the effectiveness of the rules within an adaptive management framework. Following public comment and discussion, the Commission approved the proposed rules to modify fishing regulations at Skyway Pier but also directed staff to consider additional options and refine the proposal prior to the final rule hearing. To reduce the likelihood and severity of fishing gear entanglement, staff are gathering feedback on potential final rule options for fishing regulations at Skyway Pier. These final rule options are intended to minimize harm to brown pelicans, 
reduced the need for birds to be transported to rehabilitation facilities for veterinary care, and alleviate conflict between anglers and pelicans at Skyway Pier. We are continuing to gather public feedback on the various proposed rule elements, including establishing an annual education requirement, limiting anglers to use of no more than two sets of hook and line gear, fishing gear restrictions, and a requirement for staff to review regulations two years following implementation. From a non-regulatory perspective, staff are also exploring funding and donation opportunities for seabird rescue at Skyway Fishing Pier. For example, in April of this year, FWC was awarded funds from the Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida's Conserve Wildlife Tag Grant Program for a project to purchase and install rescue equipment across the length of Skyway Pier, as well as create additional guidance and informational documents for appropriate steps to unhook an entangled bird. Across stakeholder groups, there has been generally more support for education requirements limits on the number of allowed hook and line gear sets, and the need for monitoring and review of regulations. There has been larger disagreement about what gear restrictions should be implemented. The following slides review a variety of options staff considered based on commissioner direction and public feedback in order to further refine proposed gear restrictions prior to the final rule hearing. While these slides are primarily focused on updates to the proposed gear restrictions, staff are interested in hearing feedback on any of the other proposed rule elements. FWC staff have reviewed and closely considered many different gear restriction options, which are summarized in this table on the slide. This includes restrictions based on time of day, time of year, gear type, location, and many combinations thereof. Staff consideration of the three different time of day options listed on the top row were informed by the previously mentioned study by Thomas and Foreys, which included surveys conducted at three times of day documenting the number of observed pelicans that were entangled. These time periods included 7 a.m. to 10.59 a.m., 11 a.m. to 2.59 p.m., and 3 to 7 p.m. While there was no significant difference between number of observed entangled or dead birds between the morning and midday time periods, the study did observe significantly more entangled and dead pelicans during the morning and midday hours compared to the afternoon. This could be attributed to pelican foraging activity, which is significantly higher during the morning hours. We considered various seasonal restrictions ranging from November to the end of February to November to the end of March. These were informed by rescue reports from 2021 to 2022 provided by DEP, the park concessionaire, and rescue groups that indicate winter and spring season entanglement rescues represent more than three quarters of all annual entanglement rescues. Design and construction of fishing gear can be a significant factor in entanglement risk and severity, as mentioned previously. Evidence from severe entanglements from rescuers and rehabilitators indicate that lightweight line, fishing rigs with multiple single hooks, and lures with multiple hooks are most likely to lead to harmful injuries of brown pelicans. Therefore, staff propose considering each of these gear types together when implementing restrictions for use. We also looked at location-based options for South Skyway Pier. Historically, FWC has viewed closures to access as a last resort, and based on commission direction at the February commission meeting, consideration of this option has been tabled at this time. Lastly, actions to address fishing gear entanglement of seabirds outside of FWC's scope of authority, such as the installation of deterrents, requires close coordination with DEP and DOT who share management responsibility at this location. FWC is continuing discussions with its management partners to explore options such as deterrence. However, installation of any deterrence would take time and are unlikely to fully resolve this issue. 
Therefore, FWC believes regulatory action that can be implemented quickly is necessary as part of a multi-pronged approach to reducing severe seabird entanglement. From the large list we just reviewed, staff are proposing two options shown on the slide for public consideration and feedback. Option one would prohibit use of hook and line gear with more than one hook, such as sabiki rigs, chicken rigs, and topwater plugs, and multiple hooks, such as treble hooks, from dawn to 12 p.m. year-round. Staff's proposal of gear restrictions between dawn and 12 p.m aim to find middle ground that would reduce the likelihood of entanglement during the time periods where entangled and dead birds were observed, but also allow fishing to continue during daytime hours when most fishing activity is occurring. Implementing time of day restrictions year round could provide protections during winter and spring, but also during the pelican nesting season. Option two would prohibit use of the same gear types as mentioned in option one, but seasonally from November through the end of February each year. This option aims to reduce entanglement based on rescue reports that indicate winter and spring season entanglement rescues are significantly higher than other times of year and would be in place 24 hours a day during the proposed months. The proposed gear types for seasonal or time of day restrictions can cause more severe injury to pelicans and other seabirds as well as lead to more complicated rescues, thus increasing the likelihood that a bird would need treatment by a wildlife rehabilitation center. While it is difficult to specifically quantify the conservation value of these options, staff believe either option would reduce severe entanglements that are commonly seen with the use of these gear rigs while allowing the tradition of fishing to continue. Additionally, considering either time of day or seasonal restrictions could provide a more tailored approach to reducing entanglement and minimize regulatory complexity since Skyway Pier is visited by patrons with diverse backgrounds, languages, and experience with fishing. There are several points to consider when deciding to implement fishing regulations at Skyway Pier. As mentioned throughout this presentation, education is and will continue to be important in addressing this issue. The mandatory educational component created with input by anglers and wildlife conservation groups would ensure a greater level of awareness and include training on entanglement prevention for all who come to fish at Skyway Pier. Seasonal or time of day restrictions would reduce severe entanglements that are commonly associated with fishing rigs that have more than one hook like sabiki or chicken rigs and multiple hooks when use of Skyway Pier by anglers and pelicans is at its highest. Pelican hooking by gear rigs with multiple single hooks or a multiple hook often leads to immobilization if the bird's extremities are pinned to one another, making it impossible for the bird to fly or forage. Sabiki rigs are often constructed with a light test main line and branch lines that will break if a pelican becomes hooked. Most often, entanglement of seabirds by sabiki rigs occur when the gear is being cast into or retrieved from the water and not necessarily while being actively fished. Additionally, unattended fishing gear can increase the likelihood of severe entanglement and injury if the bird cannot be rescued quickly. These severe entanglements involving multiple hooks are generally too challenging for anglers to handle alone and require the need for bird rescuer response and attention, which can be difficult to quickly receive due to the length of both piers. Limiting anglers to no more than two sets of hook and line gear would reduce the amount of live fishing line that pelicans must avoid, thereby reducing the likelihood of entanglement. These potential rule options may also help reduce the frequency of broken line, which can often be brought back to a pelican roosting site and an tangle additional birds. Lastly, the two gear restriction options presented in this presentation attempt to strike a balance between addressing entanglement, continued fishing access, and minimizing regulatory complexity. FWC staff have been actively working to find the balance between supporting popular recreational fishing activity and reducing severe entanglement and harm to pelicans and other seabirds at Skyway Fishing Pier. 
Skyway Pier is a location with unique features that provides fishing opportunities for both people and pelicans, creating a high likelihood for seabird angler interactions. The number of entanglements that occur at Skyway are significantly greater than at other sites where entanglements are documented. Therefore, regulatory action is necessary to reduce severe entanglement at Skyway Pier. Potential gear restrictions would reduce the frequency of severe entanglements and difficult bird rescues, decreasing the burden on both recreational anglers and wildlife rescuers alike. Continued outreach and education efforts remain paramount in addressing the issue. Staff will continue work to extend productive coordination between invested partners and stakeholders, which is vital to future success. Moving forward, any regulatory actions in response to this issue will be implemented within an adaptive management framework so that effectiveness can be evaluated. We'd really appreciate your input on the potential final rule options presented here, which are intended to reduce severe entanglement of pelicans and seabirds at Skyway Pier. Again, these potential final rule options include, for all those fishing at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park, establishing an annual education requirement, implementing seasonal or time of day restrictions for the use of hook and line gear with more than one hook attached and any multiple hook, limiting anglers fishing within the park to use of no more than two sets of hook and line fishing gear, and include a provision to review any regulations two years after implementation. We also welcome other suggestions for other fishing regulations that could address this issue. We will continue to gather public input on this topic, so if you or someone you know would like to provide additional comments, there are multiple opportunities to weigh in. Staff has been and will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on final rule options for fishing regulations at Skyway Pier. If you are interested in coordinating a small group meeting, please email marine at myfwc.com. You can also email comments to that email address. Another option is to provide comments through our web form at myfwc.com slash saltwater comments. After gathering feedback, staff plans to present final rule recommendations to the commissioners at their July 2023 commission meeting. At that time, we'll be sharing your feedback with our commissioners. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.